everybody, it's Greg from Nexus Property Management, and today I'm here to talk to you about what to do when there's a fire in your tenant's apartment. Now, it's extremely scary, it's extremely frightening, and it's happened to us countless times, and at some point or another, the fire department will get called to your rental property, whether it's for a cooking incident, whether it's for a major fire, or something happens in the driveway, a car catches on fire, or a garage, there's gonna be something that happens, okay? Now, the way to handle a fire is very delicate because you have personal safety, you have the property safety, and then you also have to be concerned about your liability and insurance coverage. So you need to make sure that you document and take care of things properly. So I'll go through each step right now. Now, step one is this. You get alerted of the information and you respond immediately. So the tenant calls and says, oh my gosh, there's a fire or a fire just happened that called the fire department. In any event, you need to respond immediately. But if the tenant says there's an active fire, tell them to call 911, not just you. So you wanna respond immediately to the property or have your agent, your property manager, and take photos and a video of the damage, how it lies, okay? Don't change anything, don't start cleaning up anything. You wanna take photos and video of exactly the damage caused. That is step one. Step number two is this, ensuring safety. You need to ensure that the tenant or the other tenants in the building are able to still reside there. And that decision is up to the fire department, the building department, and the city or town where the fire occurred. So you wanna meet with them, discuss with them, and see what their opinion is. Recently, we had a fire in a tenant's apartment here in Pawtucket, and what happened was, it was a very small amount of damage, it was just a door frame and a little bit of the floor. So the, uh, the fire department determined it was okay okay for the tenant to continue to stay there and there was no threat posed. But what you need to consider is if there's a situation that everybody is displaced. If everybody has to leave, then you need to help and facilitate that transfer for them. Okay. Now the Red Cross sometimes will jump in and help you, but oftentimes you may have to put them in a hotel temporarily until they can get situated and your insurance company may be able to assist you with that. Step three is negotiating with the insurance company. Make sure that you keep your insurance active. You never wanna have a lapse because if there's a lapse, they can say, sorry, you're not covered. So that is something to keep in mind. Always pay your insurance and always ensure that your building policy accommodates in the event of a fire. So when you're negotiating with them, an adjuster will come out and view the damage. You want to share with them your photos and your video that you did in step one to make sure that they are on the same page. Oftentimes, insurance companies are trying to minimize or reduce the amount of cost for them that they're going to have to pay your claim. So it might be in your best interest to hire your own adjuster your own negotiator that will, on your behalf, talk to the insurance company. We often do that as a property manager. We are your middleman. We help you negotiate that deal. But in any event, you wanna make sure that you're paid what you're owed. Because the worst thing that can happen is you end up getting a settlement from the insurance company, but it costs twice as much to do the work. So you wanna do diligence with your estimates, with your negotiating. Don't just accept the first offer and think that it's okay. The insurance companies are there as a business. They're not there as a social service. And don't forget that, okay? Step four is the rebuild. You wanna have those issues corrected if they're minor so the tenants can live peacefully again. Or if it's a full rebuild, you wanna make sure and manage that job from start to finish. Now, the job itself could take a long time. It could take forever. Potentially, it could take months and months or years, depending on how busy the building season is in your state, okay? Here in Rhode Island, there's a lot of building going on, so it might be tough to rebuild an entire tenement house within a short amount of time. So you may want to consider just knocking the thing down and selling the lot. That's an option as well. 
you don't necessarily have to rebuild it. You can take the proceeds and check with your attorney and uh, make sure that you're not doing anything that's outside of the scope of your agreement with the insurance company. But I've seen a lot of times owners just say, you know what, I don't want to spend time and money rebuilding this thing. I'd rather just knock it down, sell the lot to somebody who can or will build in the future, and I'll move on and buy another property. So that's how you want to handle this step by step. You want to respond, you want to document, you want to negotiate, and you want to act, whether it's a rebuild or moving on. Okay? So once again, this is Gregory from Nexus Property Management, your property managed.